Hello everyone, Pally Tom here. Welcome back to Risk of Rain 2. Ever since our first video on the game, you guys have been inundating me with comments saying that you want to see more Risk of Rain. And don't you know I'm happy to oblige. I've been playing this game every single day. Every day. I can't get enough of it. I have, however, recorded videos in the past and decided not to release them because I thought I could do a better job of conveying my ideas. So that's what we're going to try to do today. We're going to try to focus on an item and then build out a character that exploits that item to the utmost capacity. Today we are focusing on, forgive me please, this is an equipment item so it goes into your Q slot. It's a little cursed voodoo doll and every time you throw this out it triggers any on kill effects that your character has. On kill effects are items like gasoline which spreads fire across the map. Items like Will of the Wisp that spreads damage across the map, but also defensive items such as the Topaz Brooch and the Monster Tooth that can give you extra barriers and healing on the ground. So I thought it'd be fun today to try to exploit this equipment slot to the best of our ability. Of course, there's a thousand different ways to play Risk of Rain and you're more than welcome to play any way that you would like to. We are going to be using the Artifact of Command today. If you don't know what artifacts are and you don't know how to unlock them, I'll go ahead and leave a link to the wiki article about them so you can see just what these are and how to get them. But the Artifact of Command allows us to choose our own items, which makes these kind of build style videos possible. Now, of course, if your RNG allows you, you can try to build something similar to this in a normal game as well, but this just streamlines the process. Streamlines the process for us so it doesn't really matter what character we play uh, I'm a big fan of the huntress but like I said you can play whatever you want here level one so we want to get the fundamentals of our on kill effect started here now of course you could go for some really early movement speed so you can zoom around and loot more you could go for some early crit chance so you can just auto attack enemies down that's not what we're trying to do today we're literally trying to stack on kill effects teleporters right in front of me we do see a challenge shrine as well these are very very handy early on because they give you a lot of money and the enemies are not that difficult so we just got to take down this blue beetle that's the only one and we get a nice chunk of gold to start off. First green item, we're gonna pick up a Will of the Wisps. This causes enemies to explode for damage every time they die. And this can allow you to get some pretty cool chain reaction deaths going on the map with very, very, very little effort. Uh, it doesn't, I mean, it's not that great on its own, but hopefully when we stack other items with it, we can really start to show off the power of this item early on in the run. It doesn't actually help us kill anything just yet. Uh, we are also going to pick up the Monster Tooth. This is an item that when we kill an enemy, it drops a healing orb on the ground and we can pick up that healing orb just to return a little bit of health to our character. The Huntress is very, very squishy, so having some survivability early on is never a bad thing. We also have a Lunar Pod here that did give us an equipment item, so I'm not super interested. Uh, let's try to... Let's make sure it's equipment. Yeah, let's try to just get some more money. I want to hit the teleporter around the five minute mark. That's the goal. We'll pick up a gasoline here. So whenever an enemy dies, we'll spread fire. Uh, we can also pick up a topaz brooch. This is another white defensive item. Every time an enemy dies, we're going to get a small, it's like 15 HP or something, a small barrier, but that barrier adds up over time, especially if we're able to trigger those on kill effects all of the time a legendary item on the first level you love to see it we're gonna pick up the ceremonial dagger you guessed it this is an on kill effect whenever an enemy dies a dagger is going to be spawned and that dagger is like a ghost and it seeks out other enemies to deal damage to it really really strong with this setup and we found it super early on very optimistic about this run so I guess I should probably explain explain a little bit about the Huntress. Sorry, I'm, I can't seem to say words correctly. It's way too early in the morning. 
Uh, the Huntress is a super mobile character as I fall off the map. She has a dash that allows her to move over great distances pretty fast. If you can get cooldown reduction on this dude, she just zooms around. Her left click, I'm using the actually the alternative fire for the left click. It's actually based on critical strikes. So it fires in bursts, and if we crit, it fires more bursts. Uh, let's go ahead and pick up Maybe a crowbar might help us with bursting down enemies. And we're coming up on the five minute mark, so I'm gonna go ahead and go straight to the teleporter, which I think is actually above me. No worries, we can get up there, no problem. Look at that, dude. And there it is. You can't hide from me forever. I'll find you. Uh, this first boss is probably gonna be the most challenging thing we fight in, for a while, uh, just because we don't have a lot of items yet, and we don't have the equipment piece to really bring our whole build together. With the Stone Titan, you can actually stop him from targeting you with the laser just by getting under his feet, but we're going to just line of sight the majority of what he's doing. Now, a lot of our power comes from ads around the boss dying, so not necessarily fighting the boss, but fighting things around the boss to apply damage to it. Uh, that's going to be a very common theme. We are going to be almost solely focused on AoE damage, and that is just going to continue here with our second, I think sec, yeah, let's just do it. Second, Will of the Wisps, right at the start. Look at our barrier that we've accumulated from stuff dying around us. We're already setting off some kill chains, which is beautiful to see. Now, like I said, Risk of Rain at the end of the day is all about killing as many things on screen that you possibly can so you can get to the next level as efficiently as possible. But this actually gets pretty efficient later on. I'm a fan, I like it. Now, unfortunately on that first level, I did not see any of the orange equipment pods. So we still don't have the voodoo doll, but these on-kill effects are still pretty good. I'm not too worried about that. It's just gonna get stronger later on. Uh, second level means the chests are more expensive. We got to accumulate a little bit more gold and the enemies are of course getting harder as they always do with every passing second of the game. But look at that. Not bad. We even killed the other one in the back and the daggers are seeking out enemies and killing them too. We're actually in a great position already. That's fantastic. Uh, we are going to pick up a, this one's really cool, Gore's Tome. So every time we kill an enemy, I believe it's a 4%, I'll go ahead and check, 4% chance to drop a treasure, just like a golden nugget on the ground. And that golden nugget is usually quite a lot, like enough to buy a chest, usually. I mean, maybe, maybe I'm overestimating them a little bit. But eventually we're gonna get to a point where we're generating so much gold from those that we won't even have to stop to kill enemies anymore. Not that we ever have to stop to kill enemies in the first place because everything on the screen is gonna be dying. Another interesting green item we can pick up is something called an infusion. Normally this item stacks pretty slow. It does give you more health and I mean, having more health is good. But how it works is every time you kill an enemy, it increases your health by one. So I've maybe gotten four more health since we picked up the item. It's nothing too spectacular on its own. But if I can ever find an equipment cache, it can really scale up quite quickly. Another stone Titan. Well, I don't mind if I do. We have eight gasoline right now, so we're actually spreading quite a bit of fire. Let me break a line of sight before I get totally blown up there. Look at our AOE potential! Killing him from around the corner! All right, my dude, nice meeting you. I'll see you again some other time. I think with our next green item, I'm going to once again invest in the Wheel of the Wisps. These are the gold nuggets I was talking about that the book spawns. We're at, God, I, I'm killing stuff with daggers. We're at 559 and then we go up to 630 something, but I also got to kill, it's very hard to track how much it actually generates once this build starts popping off. Ugh, I hate this level. 
If you got equipment, though, I'm okay with it. You got any equipment here, dude? <gasps> Finally! Okay, so the reason this is so important is because a lot of our damage with this setup, we're gonna go ahead and pick up the voodoo doll. I was about to open my mouth and explain something. The reason this is so important is because we don't have, at the moment, really any single target damage whatsoever. The only way we deal damage at the moment is by killing things. And it's getting to the point where these larger enemies like this are starting to be a little tiresome to actually take down. But with the voodoo doll, that's not a problem. I'm gonna head straight to the boss and show you exactly what I mean. Okay, wait for it, wait for it. Let's let the imp lord teleport. He always teleports to you. Now we drop the voodoo doll. And that voodoo doll is pulsating every single one of our on kill effects in the area around it. So effectively, every on kill effect that we have is being cast for free. And it means that instead of having to actually kill stuff to make our damage happen, we get that effect all of the time. So, as far as this, I think we want the spleen, the shatter spleen. Critical strikes always explode, bleeding enemies now explode. So we want to add a bleed into our build somehow. Easiest way to do that is probably 100% crit because I think our floating daggers can actually bleed targets. I don't know for sure. We could try to, uh, to just put in one dagger and see how that works. I'm not super worried about this effect. We're not super focused on that right now. What we do need is a way of maximizing the effect of this being on the ground. The first way we're gonna do that is hopefully by finding some green items that allow us to use our equipment more often. All right, we have made it to hell. We're gonna start out just by throwing the voodoo doll right away to get some income going. One little trick I did as well is I picked up a golden nugget on the last level right before we phased into this one, like the moment before the teleporter took me away. And that allowed me to start this level with like 120 gold. Is that huge? Do you need to do that all the time? No, but it does help out. It certainly does help out. I'm gonna try to get enough gold for this. We just got it. As soon as my voodoo's ready. Oh, this is the item we need, fuel cells. Hold an additional equipment charge. So whereas before we only had one charge of our Q, now we have two. That means if we throw down both voodoo dolls, which we can't at the moment because they're not ready, but if we throw down both voodoo dolls, we're double dipping on all of our on kill effects. We should also point out that these voodoo dolls are spawning these super high damage daggers for free. It is insane, my dude, it's insane. Ooh, another green item, another fuel cell. Basically, just stop getting fuel cells when you can have a voodoo doll on the ground all of the time. Actually, you can have way more than one down on the ground all the time. So this is the middle of the map here. This should be pretty easy to identify whenever you're playing. Just in case you didn't know, right between these two rocks is a guaranteed legendary chest. And we are just a few gold short. If we throw down the voodoo doll, it might give us a golden nugget. It did. And we can go ahead and buy this. I am going to pick up the rocket, the brilliant behemoth. And we're just gonna use this to add more damage to those daggers that are floating around. We could have gotten another dagger, but this adds even more explosions onto everything that we're doing. Dude, hell has been so good to me. I'm on six fuel cells now. It's a 62% cooldown decrease on our equipment and an extra charge for each one. Now we did trigger a mountain shrine, so we are going to have an extra boss to fight, but we also get an extra item at the end. I'm not worried about this. Even if it's a magma worm, we can just kite away and try to stay safe. We have three voodoo dolls we can instantly throw down, which we did. And wouldn't you know, the Stone Titan is back to say hi. I got a kite away from this laser. We're actually out healing the damage that the laser can deal 
just from virtue of two topaz brooches and having these voodoo dolls down on the ground. The boss is dead. Let's throw down another doll for cover and pick up, you guessed it, even more fuel cells. Our goal is to be able to have enough cooldown reduction and enough fuel cells, enough charges, to have three of these voodoo dolls down all of the time. Next level, we are gonna do another loop. And again, I could add more teddy bears to this. I could add more movement speed to this. For the purposes of this video, I'm literally just focusing on the bare bone mechanics of what we're trying to accomplish, right? Which is these on kill effects just cascading out everywhere over the map. We could be more well-rounded, but honestly, right now, eh, why? We want our run to continue. We are going to swap the teleporter over to be focused on the planets by hitting the outside of this. And we'll keep looting. All right, I'm at 20 gasoline. That is a 3,150% duration increase and a radius each time an explosion happens of 88 meters. I think I'm good on gasoline. I don't think I really need any more. Uh, we can get some movement speed now. Why not? Let's start zooming around a little bit faster. To be totally honest with you, I haven't seen very many enemies. A lot of them are just kind of dying right away. The topaz brooch, even though we only have two of them, you can see I'm not having too much trouble with the barrier. I think maybe five topaz brooch is going to be enough to have a consistent shield up like all of the time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start the boss. Uh, by the way, my movement speed item of choice is the goat hoof. I don't really like the energy drink. It just kind of totally like it's, it's almost like a shuttle lifting off with how fast you go. I prefer the more consistent speed. The magma worm doesn't stand a chance. Goodbye, sir. I really want to stress. I, I've just kind of been running around in circles. There's absolutely been no threat to my life this entire teleporter event. And the magma worm died almost instantly. So I would say things are going pretty good, my dudes. As I almost get one shot going into the next level. <laughs> Maybe it's time to get some. Nah, I'm too. I'm too stubborn. I don't want teddy bears. Look at this. Look how far away these enemies are, and they're already dying. You love to see it. I only have one charge of the voodoo doll, and this is a mountain shrine. We should be getting another charge any moment, though. We're up to 11 fuel cells. Yeah, two charges. Beetle Queen doesn't even stand a chance, honestly. They're already grouped up, so when one dies, it's just gonna be a chain reaction. <laughs> All right, we're almost at maximum capacity fuel cells. We're almost there, dude. So I think 15 fuel cells may have actually been a little bit overkill. You'll notice I can't actually spend the voodoo dolls fast enough. You can, you can have a maximum of three of them down at a time. And I... Actually, I am getting through them a little bit. Maybe like one more fuel cell would be enough. I'm also going to start to pick up more infusions and more will of the whiffs. I might take my gasoline up to 30 just to get more range. Getting more crowbars here might not be a bad idea either. But for all intents and purposes, the build is now fully operational. So if you take a look at the items at the top, we only have two legendaries, which I think is pretty reasonable on stage eight. Like that's not crazy RNG or anything. We don't even have max crit. I want to point that out. Like we could be doing even more damage, but uh, we have the bazooka, the homing daggers, the ceremonial daggers, the spleens, which we're not even really benefiting from that much because I don't think we're applying bleeds very often. Uh, then just six Will of the Wisps, 15 fusion cells, which is a lot, like it's a lot. We have infusions that I'm starting to stack up because I wanna have even more health. By the way, every second you have a voodoo doll out, you are gaining one health with the infusion. It actually starts popping off. It makes a few infusions totally worth it. They're so easy to stack once you get going. Uh, after that, we have Gore's Tome, which is giving us gold. 
We have one Fang Necklace, which is just putting healing down on the ground on the off chance that we need it. We're not using it at all. 11 Goat Hooves for the mobility. We're starting to zoom around a little bit. Crowbars for more damage on high health targets. The Bleed Dagger, which we can utilize more soon. Uh, 20 Gasoline and 15 Topaz Brooch. That's really not that complicated. And really, at the moment, we're pretty immortal. We're not doing anything too crazy. We don't have proc chains going off. This is super beginner friendly. This is it. At this point, we would just scale it more. Unless you want to make this shit ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Give me that. This is the gesture of the drowned. Now I don't have to press my Q button. Now we get even more cooldown reduction and we're going to have an effort, effortless, constant stream of voodoo dolls being propelled out onto the map without me having to do anything. It's beautiful. We need more damage though. We need significantly more damage. These enemies are alive way too long. <laughs> cooldown. Actually, we don't need cooldown reduction on it, do we? Let's go ahead and get the resonance disc for more AoE damage. We're also starting to encounter scavengers. Which only means one thing. More crit chance. Another legendary 57 leaf clover. 100% crit chance. Extremely fast. Actually, bosses could be fa bosses could be faster. Bosses could be faster. We can do better. Oh my god, another one. Uh the meat hook. 100% bleed chance. Also remember, whenever something explodes that has whenever something dies that has a bleed on it, it explodes for a shit ton of damage. Let's get out of that before I die. Whoop, 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 whoop. Let's get a Thor's hammer. More crowbars. More will of the wisps. Let's get some cooldown reduction. Let's get some extra shifts so I can move around a little bit faster. Look how fast my health stacks with infusions. Look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it. Get more crowbars. So one problem with this build is, and I don't really know what causes it, but every now and then the I think it's from the the seashell item that we have, the lunar item. It, it just doesn't spawn. Oh no, we're dead. Yeah, it just doesn't fucking spawn stuff, dude. Ugh. So you can alleviate that by just not picking this up. But uh, I mean, until I died, I was I was pretty happy with our damage. Man, that fucking sucks. Yeah, so the gesture of the drown automates it, but there's a bug where it just stops. So if you want to just remove that from the build, you can keep this going indefinitely. Like, it just keeps getting stronger and stronger. At the end of the day, we dealt 22 million damage. We played for 67 minutes. We had no teddy bears, no damage reduction. We had <laughs> 27 Will of the Wisps that dealt 7,350% increased damage with a 72 meter range. 
one monster tooth, 20 gasoline, six topaz brooch, ceremonial dagger, 37 crowbars for 1900 increased percent damage to high health enemies. Gore's tome for free money, infusions for more health, shatter spleens, fuel cells, brilliant behemoths, 100% chance to bleed every time we hit an enemy, 14 goat hoofs for 200% increased movement speed, the fucking item that ruined our run. Lens maker's glasses for a hundred percent crit chance. The resonance disc for more AOE damage. The 57 leaf clover, which didn't do much here actually. The sentient meat hook, cause we were gonna set up proc chains. The shatter justice, cause I was gonna set up even more damage later. Hard light afterburner for more mobility and alien head for more mobility. I was literally gonna just sit around on that level and show you how fast everything died, but um, Unfortunately, sometimes you risk it, and sometimes it rains. That's the end of today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know down in the comments. I have a lot of other really fun builds that we've theory crafted on stream that I would love to showcase here. This one, once again, was about on-kill effects. Take care, everybody. See you again next time.